Hello everyone and welcome to a very, very busy episode of Box Office Receipts. I'm your host Tyler Callahan and we got the usual numbers of course, but a ton of news coming out of CinemaCon that we need to talk about. We'll start with the domestic box office where we had three new wide releases this past weekend. Opening in first place was DreamWorks The Bad Guys with $24 million. In second place is Sonic the Hedgehog 2 with $15.2 million for a total of $145.8 million. Third place was Fantastic Beast: The Secrets of Dumbledore with $14 million for a total now of $67.1 million. In fourth place was The Northman, which opened to $12 million. Fifth place was The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent with $7.1 million. Sixth place was Everything Everywhere All at Once with $5.4 million for a total of $26.9 million. For Universal and DreamWorks The Bad Guys, the opening was solid, especially as Sonic has held up really well. You know, decent competition for the families. The Secrets of Dumbledore did not hold up well at all, dropping around 67%. It was only 2% better than Morbius' second weekend drop, and that's considered terrible. Clearly, domestically, there's not much interest in the series of films in the Wizarding World. As for it making $100 million, that's going to be tricky. At, at this rate, $80 million is guaranteed. But making that last $20 million is going to be hard, especially with Doctor Strange out soon. For the other new films, both were slightly disappointing in their openings. The Northmen opened at $12 million is not great for Universal and Focus features, as they spent between 70 to 90 million making it. So unless international numbers are strong, this will at least be a small loss at the box office and they will need to look at digital and physical sales down the road to uh, turn that around. For Lionsgate, the Nick Cage movie did okay at 7 million, but it was only saved by the fact that the budget for the film was 30 million. It is so far getting great reviews and good word of mouth. Uh, there is a chance since it's a comedy, it can be counter-programming a bit to Doctor Strange and lay it out at the box office. Finally, for A24, everything, everywhere, all at once is still doing great, only dropping 11%. Also, thanks to Fantastic Beasts not doing good, theaters around the country are now splitting their IMAX screens between both films for the next week, before Doctor Strange takes them all over. Uh, just for this week, I'll be actually skipping the China news. This is an editorial choice, as the theaters are still very quiet due to them battling the pandemic, Shanghai shut down, Beijing is now uh, starting to do mass testing and all that. Uh, so between that, not much going on in a giant box office. Plus, again, we got tons of news from CinemaCon. I'll take another look at China next week and see what the, how the box office is doing. So with that being the case, we're going to go to worldwide numbers where The Secret of Dumbledore is doing better, making another $38.3 million for now a worldwide total of 280.3 million. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 made 19 million for a worldwide total of 287.8 million. The Northman made 6.3 million for a worldwide total of 23.5 million. The Bad Guys made 5.9 million for a total of 87.1 million worldwide. Ambulance made 1.8 million for a total of 27.5 million. And finally, The Lost City is moving forward with releasing in other markets and made $17.1 million for a worldwide total of $128.1 million. So, like I said before, there was a lot of news this week thanks to CinemaCon, the convention in Las Vegas where studios present their news to theater owners. Since there was a lot there, plus other news outside the convention, I'm going to organize it all by studio. Just seems to make the most sense. So let's start with Disney, and more specifically, Marvel Studios. Deadline broke the news that John Watts is stepping down from the directing Fantastic Four. As for why, Deadline is saying he needs a break after doing three Spider-Man films back to back to back. Both John Watts himself and Kevin Feige confirmed the news, and overall the departure seems to be amicable. Now one thing to keep in mind is that while he needs a break from superhero films, he might not be taking a break overall. Remember a while back, him, Brad Pitt, and George Clooney's film was bought by Apple, and that needs to start production. So I take it he wants to work on that more and found trying to work on two big films uh, too much to handle and dropped out of F4. Now, this does not mean he is done with Marvel either. In Deadline's article, they mention that Sony executives are expecting to bring him back along with Tom Holland and Zendaya for a fourth Spider-Man film. 
as for what happens to Fantastic Four, I doubt Feige is only hearing about this now, and he probably has already started the search for a new director. I expect one to be announced in a month or two, and just keep development going. Marvel Studios also swapped the release dates for their films next year. Ant-Man Quantumania, which was set to be released next July, has moved up and will now take the Marvel spot of February 17th, 2023. As for the Marvels, it will take Ant-Man's old spot and will come out July 28th. As for the reason of the swap, Deadline says it's simply that Ant-Man is further along in production, so it makes sense to release that one sooner. And that's true, Ant-Man has been finished at least with principal photography uh, for months, and is already has been in post-production for months. Uh, the Marvels just finished filming, I believe, a few weeks ago, so it would make sense to give them a bit more time. At CinemaCon, Disney did announce a few new things. First, Avatar 2 got its title, now called Avatar The Way of Water, and reconfirmed its December release date. So I guess it's happening. If you want to get a sneak peek at the film, the first trailer will be attached to Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Uh, they didn't say how long the exclusive would be, so if you really want to see trailer of Avatar, go see Doctor Strange. If not, wait a few weeks and it'll probably be on YouTube. And to get audiences back into the Avatar mood, since the first film was about 12 years ago, 13 years ago, Disney will be re-releasing the first Avatar in theaters in September with remastered sound and audio. Considering right now how quiet September is this year, I could see Avatar doing good numbers at the box office, if it's given a good marketing push. Disney will also be expanding their domestic lineup this year by adding an Indian film that they are making. What is supposed to be the start of a new franchise, Brahmasta Part 1, will be coming out domestically September 9th. It's expected to be one of the most expensive Bollywood films ever made. Now, I'm not sure how well it will do here, but I applaud Disney for diversifying their lineup here domestically. As for why they are doing this, I think besides A Quiet September giving them an opening to do it, you know, it's not like they're dropping it in August or July, uh, they are seeing that international films are getting a better foothold at the box office domestically, and naturally, they want a cut of it. Which, hey, if it means more diverse films in theaters around America, that's all the better. Lionsgate was pretty quiet this year at CinemaCon. They showed off footage of John Wick Chapter 4, which apparently showed John Wick killing someone with nunchucks. Along with that, the big news from them was an update on the Hunger Games prequel. The Ballad of Songbird and Snakes is now set to come out November 17th, 2023. The release date makes sense, as that is when most of the Hunger Games films were released. And right now, this one is set up to go up against Trolls 3. And If, which is a family film directed by... John Krasinski, and stars Steve Carell and Ryan Reynolds. So right now, the Battle of the Songbird and Snakes has the market cornered for action and for young adults who want to see a movie. But I assume another big film will be announced for the Thanksgiving holiday at some point. Finally, they showed footage of The Expendables 4, but did not announce a release date for it. Taking a look at Warner Brothers, this week they showed off footage of all the upcoming DC films to attendees. Uh, this included Black Adam, Flash... Aquaman, all that. They also announced a small change to Sajam, Fury of the Gods, which is not surprising. It will now be released a few days after Avatar The Ways of Water and come out December 21st, 2022. Probably a smart move. Other news from the studio included a release date for the Barbie movie, and it's going to be a summer one coming out July 21st, 2023. It will not only be taking a spot of Coyote vs. Acme film, which has now been taken off their schedule for now, but it'll open the same day as Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer. It's going to be a very interesting weekend next year. Also, director Matt Reeves showed up to announce that a Batman sequel is officially in development, with both him and Robert Pattinson coming back for it. Not shocked at all, considering right now it's the biggest movie of the year, but it's good to know they are actively working on it. For Sony, it was basically all Spider-Man related, besides announcing a new Ghostbusters film in development. That's it. Seriously, no title, release date, or who was attached to be part of it, just, just, they're working on one. As for Spider-Man, well, they showed off footage of Across the Spider-Verse, and Part 2 will not be called Part 2 anymore. It will be called Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse. A new Marvel movie was announced by Sony, uh, called El Muerto, an anti-hero who fought Spider-Man in the comics. The character will be played by singer Bad Bunny, who made a surprise appearance at the presentation. No other news related to the film was announced at this time. I've never heard of this character before, and from what I'm reading online, it's not a big one either. So I guess this can work in its favor. 
Uh, it's also unclear if this is a one-off film or will tie in more to the other Sony films like Venom and Morbius. Speaking of Venom, in the least shocking news from Sony, Venom 3 is confirmed to be in development. The logo for it was shown in the studio's sizzle reel and that was it. I think it will likely be another 2-3 to three years before it comes out though. Personally, I enjoyed the second one over the first one as they realized not to take themselves seriously and Tom Hardy always puts in a great performance, so I look forward to what they do for the third film. Paramount was pretty quiet with their news, uh, but we did get official titles for some of their films. The Quiet Place spinoff is called A Quiet Place Day 1, and Mission Impossible 7 is Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. That title is uh, okay for Mission Impossible, it's not bad, but it could be better, and I assume 8 will be Dead Reckoning Part 2, though they didn't mention anything about that one. The last studio we have to talk about is Universal, where the most interesting news for them was not from CinemaCon, but I'll get to that in a minute. For their presentation, they showed off a lot of the films that they have this year, including Jurassic World, Halloween Ends, Nope, uh, Minions, The Rise of Gru, finally, after a two-year delay, and Ticket to Paradise. There were also release date changes. The Super Mario movie is being pushed from December to next spring, and in its place, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, gets delayed from September to take over its spot, now coming out December 21st. Now, the biggest news from Universal is they lost a director for Fast X. Deadline broke the news that Justin Lin has left a director's seat after filming started last week. Mr. Lin co-wrote the script for the film with Dan Mazzaro, and while he will not be directing anymore, he will still be a producer for the film. As for why he left, Deadline sources are saying it was due to creative differences. As for what happens now, it's being reported that the secondary unit will still get some footage for the film, while everything else shuts down as the studio finds a new director. They are already in talks with a few candidates, and not only do they not expect it to take long to find a replacement, they do not expect this will cause a delay in its release next May. It was a uh, pretty shocking news, especially since they just started filming last week. Uh, I take it since the reason is creative differences, it's gotta be with Vin Diesel, but unless sources want to say more, we're not going to get confirmation on that. An update on how the Amazon MGM merger is going, and well, two MGM executives are leaving. Studio Chairman Michael DeLuca and President Pam MD are leaving the company. As for why, well, it's not exactly clear, but Deadline says rumors were that DeLuca was looking to have MGM run as a separate film studio inside of Amazon, but Amazon said no. Now we need to wait and see who Amazon will hire or promote to run MGM going forward. Switching over to VOD Premium, where Lionsgate has made a deal with Roku. Starting with Lionsgate releases from this year, they will be available to watch on the Roku channel, the ad-supported free channel from Roku. So how it will work is Lionsgate releases a film in theaters. After some time, it goes to Stars post theaters. After that, it will then be streaming exclusively on the Roku channel for a period of time. And then after that, it will still be there, but non-exclusive, so the films could go back to Stars or on other streaming services. It's not been reported how long this contract will be for. Overall, I think this is a solid win for Roku, as they look to beef up their content lineup for their channel. As for Lionsgate, I hope to get some good money for it. Finally, to try and move past last week's terrible news, and to not be overshadowed by other studios, Netflix has announced release dates for all of their summer films. The biggest one they have, The Grey Man, will come out in select theaters on July 15th, and hit Netflix July 22nd. As for others, the Adam Sandler basketball movie Hustle comes out on June 8th, a comedy called Me Time, starring Mark Wahlberg and Kevin Hart, comes out August 26th. And Day Shift, starring Jamie Foxx, comes out August 12th. For the summer, at least, Netflix does seem to have a solid lineup of films. But personally, I'm only really excited for The Grey Man. And that'll be it for this week's episode of Fox Office Receipts. A lot of ground to cover. Question for the episode is, does any of the news from CinemaCon get you excited? If so, let me know on Facebook. Thank you for listening, and see you next time.